Welcome to Toronto, our adopted home, a fast-moving metropolis that is widely known as the most multicultural city in the world. More than half of the city's residents are foreign-born, which blesses Toronto with a rich mix of ethnicities from virtually every country on earth. And you will see that diversity at the city's numerous festivals, amongst its many neighborhoods and inside the doors of its thousands of restaurants. We love it here, and we make sure to take full advantage of its riches. everyone we've been living in Toronto for 12 years and half of those with little kids so we thought we'd show you how to spend the perfect summer weekend in Toronto with young ones Toronto is Canada's largest city and the fourth most populous one in North America so there's plenty to do and we're going to show you just some of our faves but first up we're going to check into a hotel that caters to families with young kids the Chelsea they've graciously invited us to check out one of their four family fun suites and we've stayed at this hotel before, but never in a suite. So let's go check in. The appeal of the Chelsea Hotel lies in its commitment to families. Located less than a five minute walk from the Young and Dundas Square in the heart of downtown Toronto, it's a fun place for children of all ages to begin their vacation in the city. Starting of course with the kids check-in. From the toys offered at check-in, to the playroom and the swimming pool, the hotel ensures that kids experience something memorable. In the family fun suite, we found a spacious living room and a kitchen complete with a few treats. And a yo-yo. And a transformer. Oh, you like that? And cookies. Wow. What's wow in here? Alright, this is my room. Uh -huh. I have something to show you guys. Let's open the closet! Ooh. The closet's a bed! Oh, maybe I'm not sorry. You know what this bed is called? What? A Murphy bed. Alright, so we've just woken up and we are going to plan what we're up to today. I thought we'd start with the Attractions to Ontario website because it lists all the attractions and various things you can do in Toronto and you can filter down to family activities. And I'm going to let the kids choose what we get to do today. And then I'll mix in a couple surprises too. Alright, so do you want to pick what we're going to do today? You guys can both choose one thing that you both agree on. And I think there are a couple coupons so we get to save some money and you can use that money for some treats. Okay, so should we go through the website and see what we can find? We need some inspiration. Let's go to the aquarium. Aquarium? All right, let's go look at some fishies. Yay. The aquarium it is, but let's save that one for later. First, we make our way down Dundas Street West towards Grange Park, located behind the Art Gallery of Ontario and the distinctly shaped Ontario College of Art and Design. Okay, so one of the things we've learned while traveling is to make sure to keep the kids happy. So we're on our way to Kensington Market, but en route we stopped just outside the AGO at this fantastic new playground that they have. It's about 15 minutes from the Chelsea Hotel and then it's another maybe 10 minute walk to Kensington. En route we're going to pass through Chinatown and we're going to have a lot of fun. Constructed in 2017, the playground and splash pad in Grange Park is a kid's dream especially if your kid likes climbing ropes and apparatuses leading up to big slides. Even little ones can join their older siblings in the group swing, and on hot days you'll be thankful for the global tap filling station. The park also has a large open field for those kids that just can't stop moving. Opposite the playground lies the Henry Moore sculpture, which may or may not have been designed with kids in mind, but they love it anyway. With the kids now content, we made our way towards Chinatown, which is less than a 10 minute walk from the AGO. If you're looking for souvenirs and great food, Chinatown has those and much more. Just keep the family close as it's one of the most visited areas of the city. Keep an eye out on the shop windows for some interesting sights. One street over, we entered Kensington Market, a world heritage site that's the place to go for vintage boutiques, independent shops and artistic spaces. It's a fantastic jumble of interesting sights and entertainment. One of my favorite shops is the Kensington Brewery, a craft beer maker located near the top of the busy Augusta Avenue. Inside, the kids enjoyed staring at its Where's Waldo-like wall mural, while the adults sampled some great beer. Outside, we discovered a sampling of the area's incredible graffiti. 
Okay, now it was time to head to Ripley's Aquarium, located at the base of the CN Tower, which is hard to miss. The 510 streetcar that runs along Spadina Avenue brought us to the area, and the kids grew pretty excited. This is what they've been waiting for all day. Even the lobby displays at the aquarium are great. We usually have to drag the kids away from the colorful tanks out front, but with tickets in hand, we managed to make our way inside. From the upper level, the kids can scout out the small play area downstairs, but they'll be quickly distracted by the more than 450 species that await. Right away, we were treated to a lobster battle. Oh my god! They can actually smack each other. They can smack each other. I hope nobody got hurt there. And next up, it was the star of the show. A creature that often remains hidden from sight decided on this day to put on a show. I admit to being mesmerized as it moved across the tank. Having recently read that some scientists speculate that these animals may be an alien species, I was all the more intrigued by its movements. Our daughter loves flowers, and so she spent some time staring at the sea anemone, displayed here in all the colors of the sea. Another feature our family loves is the Dangerous Lagoon, which features the largest moving sidewalk in North America. The lagoon is filled with majestic species like stingrays and the frightening sand tiger sharks, which are known as a docile species of shark, but you wouldn't know it by looking at the multiple rows of sharp pointy teeth. Hey, what are you looking at? What's up there? My favorite is the green sawfish, which always tends to rest on top of the glass tunnel, revealing a strange frown beneath its extended saw, known as a rostrum. Watch out! As we neared the end of the tunnel, we even spotted a few sea turtles. Next up, who wants to pat a horseshoe crab in the touch tank? And as you can see, we finally reached the playground. From there, kids have a chance to stick their heads up into the lagoon and then take some time to hit the slides, one of our kids' favorite activities. Nearby, the shark reef lets kids immerse themselves into shark-invested waters. At the next exhibit, the limited-time Curious Creatures area, visitors have a chance to learn a little about Robert Ripley and a few of the many exhibits he displayed in his lifetime including the giant clam, the ship of cow horns, and the monkey-headed Fiji mermaid, originally made famous by P.T. Burnham. A visit to Planet Jellies was next. The colorful exhibit is one of the most memorable displays in the aquarium. I've had a few experiences with jellyfish while growing up near the ocean, including one instance when my youngest sister surfaced to find one attached to her face, so I am always happy to enjoy their hypnotic beauty from behind the glass. The aquarium even features a look at the life support systems that regulate the temperature and water flow for each of the tanks. In the final section of the aquarium, visitors are encouraged to allow these scarlet cleaner shrimp to eat the dead skin from their hands. If that's not your thing, perhaps you could try to pet a stingray. As you exit, be prepared to examine a few of the toys on display in the gift shop. To end our day, we crossed the street to Queen's Quay, which runs along Toronto's waterfront. From there, you can catch some pretty great views of the city and give the kids a chance to explore the boardwalk and accompanying Sandy Beach at HTO Park. Alright, so we decided to end our day right by the waterfront. This is one of our favorite spots to relax in the summertime. It is right across from the CN Tower and the Ripley's Aquarium. And the waterfront has a lot of things to do if you do decide to spend the day here. There is the Harbourfront Centre with lots of kids' activities and there's a bunch of brew pubs here and there's something going on all the time. Festivals and arts and crafts, you can find it all or you can just hang out and play in the sandbox. From the waterfront, getting back into the downtown core is easy. Once again, it's the 510 streetcar to the rescue, which we take to Union Station the central transportation hub in the city. We headed back towards the Chelsea Hotel, but first stopped into Via Mercanti, which is just steps away from the hotel. Its Neapolitan-style pizza is one of my favorite meals in Toronto. All right. Having a good breakfast? Yeah. Okay, so we had a pretty busy day yesterday. What do you guys think we should do today? Well, Let's go see dinosaurs! <laughs> okay, we can do the Royal Ontario Museum. How about that? Okay. Good idea? Okay. 
Dinosaur. Yeah, there's dinosaurs here, and we saved three dollars. Yes. Okay. So let's go see what adventures awaits us today. Sounds like it's time to go looking for dinosaurs. So we headed to the subway nearby, grabbed a day pass, which is good for two adults and up to four youth under twenty on weekends and holidays. Museum. Museum Station. If your kids like dinosaurs, the ROM is a must stop. It's filled with life size dinosaur recreations, including this Futalankasaurus that greets visitors on their entry to the museum. Towering over spectators, the dinosaur offers a taste of what's inside, including a whole dinosaur wing where interactive displays help the kids to learn more. The gallery features animals from the Jurassic to the Crustaceous period which was just 65 million years ago. The dinosaurs on display are a mix of actual bones and reconstructed elements, producing authentic displays that kids and adults will love. Hello, we saw one of these crickets, remember? The ROM isn't just about dinosaurs, of course. There is lots to see and do. One of our first stops is usually Discovery Way, where the kids have a chance to go searching for bones in the mini excavation zone, view fossil displays, and take some time to use their imaginations with the building blocks. For kids who like to play dress up, there are ancient dresses and garments to try on. Another area we made sure to visit was the Earth's Treasures Gallery, which features an impressive display of minerals, gems, rocks, and meteorites. With almost 3,000 pieces, the gallery is like walking into the world's most prestigious jewelry store. Our daughter was captivated by the remarkable display, particularly the Gallery of Gems and Gold, where we found the Star of Sri Lanka, an array of beautiful jewelry, and some rather large gems, at which point she started planning a robbery. And at the night, I can break through the glass and take all the jewels! It was time to get back outdoors, so we made our way back to the subway to get to High Park, Toronto's largest public park, and an outdoor space where the kids can get into all kinds of adventures. We had built up an appetite, so we grabbed a hot dog and fries just inside the entrance across from High Park Avenue, before making our way towards Grenadier Pond, where we were lucky to catch the cherry blossom trees in bloom. The park is quite large, and so we took advantage of its many rest areas as we enjoyed nature. Eventually, we reached the Jamie Bell Adventure Park, an enormous playground that is literally made up of castles. It's teeming with kids screaming with joy as they make their way in and out of the various rooms en route to the slides. Our kids did not stop smiling the whole time, and the only way we convinced them to leave was to promise them a trip to the mini zoo, which is just a five minute walk away. The zoo introduces kids to llamas, emus, bison, deer, and peacocks, and is open daily from 7 a.m. until dusk. It's a fun stop for kids who love animals, and best of all, admission is free. What are you looking at, Akira? A llama butt. Stinks? Yeah. Since High Park is located in the west end of town, we stopped into our favorite brew house on the way back downtown, the Indy Ale House, which produces a wide range of craft beer in-house, offers bottles to go, and features an absolutely delicious menu. If you're looking for a great treat to end the day, order their black truffle popcorn. Back at the hotel, we took the kids for a quick stop into the playroom and for a swim at the hotel pool. We had a busy two days sampling just a few of the many attractions Toronto has to offer. Thankfully, we live here, so we have a chance to keep exploring this amazing city. But if you're coming in from out of town and staying at the Chelsea Hotel, know that you can even show your room key at a number of city attractions to get a discount on admission. Get in touch with us if you want to learn more.